In this video, we're going to introduce the one dimensional particle in the box problem. So the first four units in this class were dedicated specifically to building up Schrodinger's equation, learning the properties of the equation and how we can actually utilize it to calculate properties for quantum systems. Now we're going to spend the next few units actually introducing some quantum systems and solving Schrodinger's equation for those cases. So the most useful um, starting points and foundation are the foundational types of motion that particles can undergo. And that's translational motion, uh, vibrational motion, and rotational motion. So we'll have a different quantum system and quantum problem to solve for each of those types of motion. And for translational motion, the simplest non-trivial example is the one-dimensional particle in the box. Right. So whenever we have a quantum system, we're going to physically describe the problem. And then the point from there is to uh, is to define the problem, define the forces at, or the uh, the energies at play via the Hamiltonian and solve for a uh, an acceptable wave function for that uh, for that problem. Right. So if we have our Hamiltonian, right, so we've seen our Hamiltonian operator in general is just a sum of the kinetic energy plus the potential energy, right? So where this T operator is the kinetic energy and our V here is the potential energy, right? So these are gonna come from your physical problem. You're going to see what type of situation your particle is in, what's the kinetic energy contribution and what's the potential that's acting on your particle, right? So that's what we're gonna do here with this uh, this problem of the one dimensional particle in the box. So basically this problem is we have a, a particle of mass M that's in a box and it's only moving in one direction. In this case, I've defined the axis where it's moving in the X direction and you have a bar, a, a box of some length L, right? So the box has a total length, uh, from zero to L and at the edges of those, of this box, the potential acting on the particle is actually infinite. Now, what that is going to mean effectively is that this potential wall is an impenetrable wall that the particle cannot uh, go through or go over or anything like that. The potential at the end of this box is infinite. So basically, we're confining the particle to only move within this defined space, our box, right? So how do we define the Hamiltonian for this guy? Well, if we look at this problem, right? Uh, what we have here essentially is that inside the box, the particle is functioning as a free particle. Right? The box is empty. There's no other potentials acting on it inside the box. Inside the box is free to move as a free particle. And we actually already know the Hamiltonian and acceptable wave functions and energies for the free particle uh, problem. Right? And then at the edges of the box, you have an infinite potential wall, right? So if we think about it in that sense, then we know that if this particle is functioning as a free particle inside the box, then we know what its kinetic energy operator is going to look like, right? So its kinetic energy operator is going to be the exact same kinetic energy operator for a free particle. So you have negative H bar squared over two M, second derivative with respect to X. Right. This is the same uh, kinetic energy operator we've seen for the free particle problem. Since this particle is basically the same as the free particle inside the box, then this is going to be its uh, kinetic energy operator. Right now, as for the potential, unlike the free particle, we're actually going to have a potential to define here. So if we define our potential, right, we're going to have to define a function. Right, a function that basically depicts what we have in the picture, right? No potential in the box, but an infinite potential at the edges, right? So basically we'll have a function with two outcomes. This uh, function, this potential function will be zero if the particle is inside the box. So when zero is, when X is between zero and L and it's gonna be infinite anywhere past that, right? So if uh, X is less than zero, uh, and if X is greater than L, right? So if, if, if the particle goes beyond the box, this is a infinite potential, can't go past it. If it's, uh, greater than L, 
then it can't go past that infinite potential, right? So this is basically a function that paints the picture that we have here, right? So basically this would be our Hamiltonian, right? So we could write out our Schrodinger's equation in full here and say that we have negative h bar squared over 2m, second derivative of the wave function with respect to x, plus the potential function times the wave function is going to equal some energy times the wave function back again, right? So this would be our time independent Schrodinger equation that defines the particle in the box, right? At this point, we have a Hamiltonian that defines our physical problem, right? We have our uh, kinetic energy and our potential energy term, right? Now at this point, uh, the only thing that's left here is to get the wave functions and the energy levels for the particle in the box. So that's gonna be the focus of the next video. In the next video, we're gonna go through how we actually get the wave functions and the energy levels for the particle in the box.